wake up and think about what I did last Saturday because it seems like yesterday. Time is so mysterious that the previous Saturday seems just like yesterday. And I've come to find that time is like the old video games I played growing up back in the late 90s and early 2000s as a little kid. You have the character on the screen and the left side of the screen is pushing your character forward and it won't let you go backwards. I thought about how this is just like time is. You're always going forward and you can't go back. The difference is that in the video game you can go back and try it again after you fall. But in life you just have to learn from the failures and go on. You can't go back and fix it. But here are some basic truths on how you should look at your time. Number one, words continue on after death. Ecclesiastes 1.1 says, The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. The preacher is Solomon, and he is the son of David and Bathsheba. I've often wondered who would have ended up writing Ecclesiastes if David had never stole Bathsheba from her husband. I've often wondered about what it would be like to have a father like David, who was in love with the words of God and who was also a manly person, influence, a great man of war. What could he have passed on to me in terms of wisdom? So verse 1 says, the words of the preacher. Even though you won't live physically in this life forever, your words continue on after death. Your words can help you or hurt you. They can help others or hurt others. What are you doing with your words? Job 26 4 says to whom hast thou uttered words and whose spirit came from thee I don't have any type of special skills or abilities in anything I wanted to do something for the Lord I could be completely wrong but putting out these studies every morning could be causing many words to live on after I die even if they are completely taken off the internet maybe someone learned something that would stay in their heart until they died maybe somehow they will be these studies will be preserved after I'm dead. Proverbs 15, 26 says, The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. Proverbs 16, 24, Pleasant words are as in honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. I was listening to this great preacher, Carl McIntyre, the other day. The sermon was from the 1950s, and I started thinking to myself, I bet this guy never dreamed someone 70 years later would be listening to this sermon. It's really amazing in a way, if you think about it. His words lived on after death and maybe still producing fruit that would go to his account at the judgment seat of Christ. He used his words wisely. He has almost a thousand sermons available on the internet, and he's been dead almost 20 years. Ephesians 5, 15, and 16 says, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Colossians 4, 5, and 6, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. There it connects someone's speech with redeeming the time. What are you using your mouth for? For good or for evil. Matthew 12, 34 says, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. There are so many preachers like Lester Roloff and Harold Seitler and Peter Ruckman and Sammy Allen and many dead saints who preached the truth and it was recorded on tape and their words continue to live on through that audio. Their words continue to live on in the hearts of people who recorded them in their heart. Ecclesiastes 9.17, The words of wise men are heard and quiet more than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. On the other hand, you have men who dedicated themselves to sinful music. Sometimes men will be playing the radio at work and a very old but very popular song will come on. Stairway to Heaven, for example, by Led Zeppelin back in the 70s or whenever that was. That band decided to record their words. I thought to myself, how many billions of people have listened to this song and how many trillions of times has it been played? Think about it. That's an old song. How many trillions of times has it been played? I guarantee you that popular songs like that are played somewhere in the world at any given moment. 
right now while I'm talking, someone who listened to that song was was it was recorded 40 or 50 years ago and someone is listening to that song right now somewhere in the world somebody's listening to that very song and it's getting played trillions of times do you know how much damage the devil can do with a three to five minute song just because those guys decided to record that song 40 50 years ago whenever it was what are you deciding to do with your words because at the same time, do you know how much glory you could give God by uttering the words of God? And they just might go on to be heard after you're dead. Then you have the words of God that truly live on forever. Luke 21, 33, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. What is the most beneficial thing you can do with your time? Put words in your heart and spirit that are eternal words. Psalms 12, 7 Psalm 12, 7, Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. When you think about time, you need to remember, words go on after death. Always be conscious of time. Many times I'll see old pictures or something. You'll go to your grandparents' house, you'll see old pictures that are black and white, and I sit and think about, at one time, that was the present. At one time, that old picture what was in that old picture was the present time just like right now is the present time and if time goes on then 70 80 years later somebody down in your family line will will see a picture of you and they'll be like man that's old but right now this is present time that you're in what are you doing with your time it goes so fast it's just you're it's like the video game character the left side of the screen's pushing you and you can't go back. Also remember, when it comes to time, works for the Lord have eternal value. That's the next thing. Works for the Lord have eternal value. Ecclesiastes 1, 2, and 3. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. What profit hath a man of all his labor, which he taketh under the sun? When you think about it, it almost... Almost everything you do in this life is vain. You go to work for food. You eat the food and it's gone. I get excited over a big plate of hot wings and then they're just gone. Then I say to myself, what was the point of even eating all those hot wings? Then you get some Krispy Kreme donuts and you're so excited, but then they're gone and there's no more donuts. What profit hath a man of all his labor under the sun? Mark 8, 36 says, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? There isn't any profit to your work in this life unless God gets glory when you do it. So go to work and live for the Lord. Any work you do, even if it doesn't seem spiritual, can be for the Lord. If you wake up and give an honest day's work and your supervisor knows you're a Christian, then this gives glory to God. Ephesians 6, 5 through 8 says, Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, and singleness of your heart, as unto Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. If you'll live by this, then your labor will profit you in eternity and not only down here. However, Solomon in Ecclesiastes is viewing things, for the most part, as life under the sun. And down here, everything you have is vain, everything you eat is vain, everything you work for is vain. However, in an eternal sense, if it was for the Lord or gave glory to God, then it will last forever. In 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Paul said, Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Those three key words, in the Lord. So when you consider time, you need to remember your words go on after death. Also, your work for the Lord has eternal value. And the next thing you need to consider when it comes to time is, wind is like your life. Wind is like your life. Ecclesiastes 1, 4 through 6 says, One generation passeth away. And another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. The sun also ariseth, and the sun goeth down, and hasteth to his place where he arose. The wind goeth toward the south, and turneth about unto the north. It whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his circuits. 
When you're walking outside and you feel wind hit you in the face, you didn't even think about that wind again. Do you remember all the times you got hit in the face by a gust of wind? That's how your life is. It blows through and then vanishes quicker than it comes. Nobody remembers you. 99% of the world doesn't even know who you are and 100% most likely won't know who the average person walking around today is 100 years from now. There are exceptions. You can be the exception. Truthfully, though, the average person is going through life doing absolutely nothing, leaving nothing behind to be remembered. James 4.14 says, Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Job 7, 6 and 7. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and are spent without hope. Oh, remember that my life is wind. Mine eyes shall no see no more good. Ecclesiastes 1, 4. One generation passeth away and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. Did you ever think about the fact that at one time your grandparents were your age? At one time, your mother was the same age that you are now. Now they are old or have already passed on. One generation comes and goes. Then another generation comes and goes. In the sense of life under the sun and not in view of eternity, the earth abideth forever. It seems like it will never stop and just keep going sometimes when you're not thinking in a biblical sense. Look at your parents and grandparents. Have they used their time wisely? Have they done anything for the Lord? If they haven't, then you will be in the same shape spiritually as them when you get their age. Your grandparents have so many wild stories to tell, but they are all vain and pointless. They may be fun and entertaining, but after they are gone, their stories will fade, most likely. Life, for the most part, is sag, bag, and drag. And if you're lucky, you have a story or two to pass on to somebody else. Psalm 90 and verse 9, For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. And that's what you'll find out when you get older. When you get old, you spend your years as a tale that's told. You got some stories to tell. They're all vain and pointless, especially if you didn't live for the Lord. Ecclesiastes 1 5 The sun also ariseth, and the sun goeth down, and hasteth to his place where he arose. Do you remember every time you saw the sun rise and the sunset? That's how your life is. It won't be remembered. When you wake up in the morning, do you think to yourself, Oh, I love the sun for coming up today? You see the sun every day, and you don't do that. So if time goes 100 more years, do you think people are going to remember you? Ecclesiastes 1 7 All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full, and to the place from whence the rivers came, thither they return again. You ever been by a river or walked on the beach and thought about how 100 years ago people walked on this same ocean on vacation and now they're dead? But back then, when they was walking on this beach, they were young, they thought they had so much more time left, and now time passed and they're dead. Their whole vacation was vain. They had fun for a week and then it was over. They may have pictures to look look at and make it last longer, but the picture ain't like the real thing and the picture burns up eventually. Consider time. Consider how your life is like wind. Wind is like your life. When it comes to time, you also need to watch what you see and hear. So remember, wind is like your life. Watch what you see and hear. Ecclesiastes 1.8 says, All things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. The eye is not satisfied with seeing. Proverbs 27.20 Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. You take the movies that they come out with today. They have to have more and more special effects. They have to have more and more action scenes. And back right before I got saved, the last few action movies I watched were so full of action, I couldn't even remember what the movie was about. It just kept cutting from one scene to the next. You keep seeing stuff blow up, a building falls over, a bridge gives in, a helicopter crashes. And I was like, what is this movie even about again? I mean, they got to put so much of that in there because the eyes of men are never satisfied with seeing. It has, it's, it has to get more advanced and more advanced to keep people's attention to the point you don't even remember what the movie's even about. I completely understand why many people don't watch my studies on here. And why I've been doing this for 10 years and, you know, 
I have very few people. It's because it's audio placed over a picture. It can't keep anyone's attention. Uh, Danny Castle has the best preaching on YouTube, but it gets a lot less views than other pastors on here because the video is blurry. If you had that clear, high-definition video, his videos would get thousands of views. I've been putting his videos on YouTube for a decade. And every now and then, one of the videos will get 20,000 views. But people are more concerned with good video picture quality than they are with the content of the message. The eyes are never satisfied with seeing. You have to watch what you see. They have that kid's song, Be careful, little eyes, what you see. The more pornography a man watches, the harder it will be to satisfy his lust. The ears are never satisfied with hearing, as Solomon said. That's another thing. When my grandparents were little, Elvis was filthy music. Now the average person thinks Elvis is godly music. Now look at the music now. You see 6 9 and Nicki Minaj music videos in the sneaker stores, and it's like an adult movie clip. I mean, you can't even take your kid in the store because they'll be playing that on the TV or on the radio. I remember as a lost person, the music I listened to got harder and louder as time went on. I went from liking Three Doors Down or something like that to liking Breaking Benjamin, Slipknot, Mudvayne, System of a Down, and junk like that. The Beatles were wicked back in the day, and they're still wicked. But now you have Lady Gaga drinking blood with small kids sitting next to her on a CD cover. I mean, it's getting worse. It take, it's taking more to satisfy. Watch what you see and hear. Are you wasting your time hearing and seeing sinful things? You'll wish you had that time back. Time is mysterious. It's going very fast. So watch what you see and hear. And when it comes to time, remember, what's new isn't a good question. Things don't get better with time. They get worse. Evil men and seducers show wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Acts 17.21 says, For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Are you worried about what's in the news? Are you spending all your time refreshing your news feed on Facebook? If you're looking for something new here, then you're not going to find it. You won't find anything new until your new, new body comes. And then Jesus will one day make all things new. In Revelation 21, 5, it says, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. So, God's got something new, but on this earth there's nothing new. Ecclesiastes 1, 9, 1, 9 The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. There is no new things. The movies are like Fast and Furious 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and all the way to 9, I think now. Then in 15 years, they'll remake the first one and do it all over again. And all the music sounds the same. It's the same thing over and over. Ecclesiastes 1.10, Is there anything whereof it may be said, See, this is new. It hath been already of old time, which was before us. You almost can't have an original thought. Sometimes I think I found something else in the Bible and I'll go around and read some commentaries or something and they already found it a hundred years ago. What I thought, what I found was something that God gave me that was had never been revealed to anybody before. If you're worried about new things all the time, then you'll find that you're wasting your time. Growing up, adults used to always tell me that I really need to read the newspaper and watch Fox News. And I thought they were right, although I never did end up watching the news. But this is one of those cases where the adults were wrong. You don't have to watch that junk. It's a complete waste of time. And the people on there are godless. They've got uh, a lying uh, spirit about them. They have an agenda behind what they're doing. But some people will sit and read the newspaper and never pick up a Bible. They'll sit and watch Fox News and never pick up a Bible. Those people are liars. Uh, stuff is made up to try to keep your attention. But watch what you hear and see. And remember, what's new isn't a good question when it comes to time.
And when it comes to time, will you be an exception? In Ecclesiastes 1.11, it says, There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. There are exceptions to the rule that I've already mentioned. Some great Christians have put out books and audio and video material that will probably be around until the second coming of Jesus Christ. I recently converted around eight or 900 Danny Castle cassette tapes to MP3. Not to mention I already had over a thousand of his sermons on MP3. If you're consistently putting out material like that for the glory of the Lord, then you can be an exception to the rule. Your words can go on until God winds things up. However, as a general rule, there is no remembrance of the average Joe. Will you be an exception? How can you be an exception? Wish for wisdom. In Ecclesiastes 1, 12 and 13, I, the preacher, was king over Israel and Jerusalem, and I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. This sore travail hath God given to the sons of man to be exercised therewith. Solomon was king, but he still humbled himself and asked God for wisdom. When you ask for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, you are admitting to God that you don't know it all. And God likes somebody that's not a know-it-all. In verse 13, Solomon said, This life is sore travail. Solomon found that he found out through living a life of luxury and pleasure that life is sore travail. Job found it out through suffering that life was sore travail. Every day someone is hurting, being tortured and, and sick, having painful childbirth and starving, Murders are being committed, things are being stolen, kids are being trafficked, people are high on drugs, and every wicked thing you can imagine, the world down here is sore travail. Putting a lot of time and effort into bringing world peace or having your own kingdom on earth is a big waste of time because this world will end and your kingdom will end. Jesus Christ's kingdom is what lasts forever. Your time should be dedicated to the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the only way it won't be vanity. With time, you'll find the things of God are all that really matter. Ecclesiastes 1.14, I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Solomon had seen and done it all. He was the richest man who ever lived. He could have anything that he wanted, all the women, all the clothes, all the cars, all the jewelry, a mansion on every street of Jerusalem. Yet he still said it was all vanity and vexation of spirit. Ecclesiastes 1.5, that which is crooked cannot be made straight, and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. A crooked man can turn over a new leaf and live right for a while, but it wouldn't matter. He would still go to hell as a lost man. What matters is, has he believed on Jesus Christ? That's the only way a crooked man can be made straight. All that which is wanting cannot be numbered. You can't even number the things that need to be done. The only time things will be perfect and nothing needs to be fixed or settled is in eternity. Then we will have perfect peace. He said in verse 16, I communed with my own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate, and have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. Yea, my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. So Solomon communed with his own heart. He talked to himself a little bit. He realized he has come to great estate, much greater than the Biltmore estate. His bank account was much better than the Greg Bezos of the Amazon CEO guy, you know, who's a got $200 billion. Solomon had much more, much more money than anybody. Solomon had money and he had wisdom. Nobody had that kind of wisdom before or after him. Solomon had experience of wisdom and knowledge. He got to have all this wisdom and try out all the pleasures of life at the same time. His conclusion at the end of the book is, fear God and keep his commandments. Verse 17, And I gave my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceived that this also is vexation of spirit. He's seen it all, did it all, heard it all. And all this knowledge from the Lord at the same time was retained. There is no telling what he could teach you. Verse 1 calls him the preacher. Imagine the illustrations Solomon could give you in a sermon. Verse 18, For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. If Solomon had all the wisdom, then you know he had a lot of grief. When you get saved and you get in the Bible, you find out everything around you is wicked. It causes a lot of grief. 
When you increase knowledge, you increase your sorrow. I remember the day that I found out that pretty much everything from my childhood up was part of the devil's plan to take me to hell. I think back about all the time wasted, and it would be nice to have it back. But the devil loves time wasters. He loves distractions. He loves the phrase, kill time. And I hate when someone says, let's kill some time. Time is a gift from God. The moments when you can't do anything, you can still pray. You can still read the Bible. You can still use your words that go on after death. 